What is up everybody, it's Animac here for Anime Uproar and today I will be delving deep into the ruthless philosophy that is driving the actions of Eren Jaeger. The protagonist of Attack on Titan and someone who has undergone an incredible character progression from the beginning of the series up to this point. This progression has been especially drastic in the most recent arcs of the Attack on Titan manga and this has led to a lot of confusion in the fandom, since a lot of the anime-only fans who still haven't seen the full extent of this progression tend to underestimate Eren as a character. On top of that, there have been quite a few posts online that have implied that this new Eren is a monster, a villain, or evil in general. Some of these posts have gained considerable traction, and in this video I will be debunking the notion that Eren is now the villain of the series. I will argue that Eren's philosophy is actually far more complex than many people give it credit for, and I will explain why Eren is still the hero, not the villain, of Attack on Titan. If you enjoyed the Attack on Titan content on this channel and you'd like to see more, you can leave a like to let me know. And if you happen to be new to Anime Uproar, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Heads up, this video will contain Attack on Titan manga spoilers. I'm gonna be dealing with all the latest developments in the story in order to paint a full picture of Eren as a character. So please proceed with caution, you have been warned. As we all know, a lot has happened to Eren as a character after the 4 year time skip, and I have entire videos dedicated just to discussing his actions in specific chapters such as 120 and 121. But to briefly summarize, for a long time after the time skip, we were led to believe that Eren was working with Zeke, and that Eren and Zeke were heading up a new Jaegerist faction on the island of Paradis, which was determined to make Zeke's ultimate plan a reality. We eventually learned that Zeke's plan was to use the Founding Titan's power to make all living Eldians infertile, which would lead to every member of the Eldian nation, every subject of Ymir, essentially dying out within a generation. Zeke believed that this euthanasia plan would finally bring peace to the world because he feels that Eldians, due to their ability to turn into titans, will always be condemned to suffer in this world. They will always be distrusted by the other nations and their titan powers will continue to bring them into conflict with everyone else, leading to an endless cycle of death and suffering. Zeke came to the conclusion that if he only could mercifully allow the Eldian nation to die out, then the world would be saved. But we know from our own world that his conclusions don't actually make sense. In the real world, we don't have anyone who can transform into a titan. And yet, we still have war, civil strife, and suffering. I've always felt that Zeke's plan was both futile and deeply unfair, since he seems to have internalized the Marlan belief that this generation of Eldians should be punished for the wrongdoings of their ancestors even though they themselves did nothing wrong. However, for a long time we were led to believe that Eren was fully on board with Zeke's plan. We even saw Eren fight with his best friends from childhood, Armin and Mikasa, and it appeared as if Eren decided to abandon his friends and comrades for Zeke and Zeke's philosophy. Nevertheless, Armin had a hunch that this was not really the case, that Eren merely wanted Zeke to think that he was on his side. And this was finally confirmed in chapter 120 of the manga. In chapter 120 and the subsequent chapters, we realize that Eren is opposed to Zeke's plan and that he has his own unique philosophy that is incompatible with Zeke's. Eren's philosophy is ruthless. I think that it could be accurately called Machiavellian, but Eren's philosophy is not evil. It is not villainous. And with the help of Machiavelli himself, I will explain exactly where Eren is coming from and what his ultimate goal is. Niccolo Machiavelli was an Italian political philosopher who lived in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. He is known for several important political works, including The Prince and The Discourses, and his ideas are still highly revered in the fields of political philosophy and international relations. But just like Aaron Jaeger after the time skip, Machiavelli has been greatly misunderstood by the general public. The very word Machiavellian has become synonymous with being sneaky, immoral, and willing to do whatever it takes to get your way, including lying, cheating, stealing, and so on. If you call someone Machiavellian in the modern world, you are probably criticizing them, and if I call Aaron's philosophy Machiavellian, you might be tempted to think that I am criticizing Aaron and calling him a villain. But this is not the case. 
Eren's philosophy is Machiavellian, it is ruthless, but it also makes perfect sense within the ruthless world of Attack on Titan. And yes, this includes Eren's decision to encourage Grisha to kill Frida and most of the royal family, something that we learned about in chapter 1 to 1 of the manga. Okay, so here's why Machiavelli is so often misunderstood in the modern world. Machiavelli is known for his advice to rulers on how to rule their states or kingdoms, especially the advice he gives in The Prince. Machiavelli says things like, it is better for a ruler to be feared than loved, he says that a ruler must be cunning like a fox and fierce like a lion, and he says that anything, even behavior that may be considered immoral by the general public, is acceptable if your goal is to preserve the stability of the state. The ruler must prioritize necessity over conventional morality, and if the stability of the state is at stake, all methods of preserving that stability are justified, no matter how immoral they may appear at first glance. This principle is often summed up as, the ends justify the means, although this is not actually a direct quote from Machiavelli. But here's the thing, Machiavelli was not advocating for immorality and he did not believe that rulers should be immoral. Rather, he was a critic of the conventional morality of his time and he believed in a new and different kind of morality. A morality that prioritizes different ends than the more conventional Christian and civic humanist moral codes of his time. In order to understand Machiavelli's idea of morality, and Aaron Yeager's current idea of morality, we must look at the context in which these two individuals are living. I said earlier that Niccolo Machiavelli was Italian, and he was in the sense that he was from the city of Florence in Tuscany, but in Machiavelli's lifetime, Italy as a country did not exist. At that time, Italy was divided into many separate states, all with their own interests and agendas, and part of what is modern Italy was also occupied by foreign kingdoms including France and Spain. The various Italian city-states were constantly warring with each other, which meant that Italians were constantly killing other Italians, and this made Italy as a whole even more vulnerable to foreign attack and occupation. Machiavelli was writing his ideas in these chaotic times full of war, suffering, and betrayal. Although the world of Attack on Titan is very different from the real world and it includes supernatural powers, it isn't hard to spot the parallels between the chaos, war, and suffering of Italians in Machiavelli's time and the chaos, war, and suffering of Eldians in the world of Attack on Titan. Like the Italians and their states in the 15th century, the Eldians are divided, oppressed, and governed by rulers who don't really care about their own people. Machiavelli wanted to bring about change. He wanted to stop the constant war, infighting, and suffering of his homeland. He looked around and saw that the conventional morality of his time, morality that was primarily influenced by Christian and civic humanist traditions, was not bringing about the changes that he wanted. Machiavelli rejected the idea that Italians of his time shouldn't worry about how badly their homeland was being governed because their primary concern should be on being good Christians so that they could get into heaven. He also rejected the idea that people should always treat others with kindness and respect even when those other people abuse your kindness in order to stay in power. For example, conventional Christian and civic humanist principles would say that you should never kill another person or steal something from another person. It's right there in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not steal. But Machiavelli takes a different approach. He believes that defending one's homeland and one day uniting Italy in the way that it was unified under the Roman Republic is the ultimate goal. To him, this goal is true morality, not the individualistic morality of never killing or stealing under any circumstances. Machiavelli believes that defending and unifying his homeland must be achieved by any means necessary, because failing to do so will result in more wars and more suffering for thousands and thousands of people. If you have to kill in the pursuit of this goal, if you have to steal in the pursuit of this goal, then you should do it. Machiavelli is not saying that you should be immoral. He is saying that what is happening to his homeland at that particular time is the greatest immorality. In that sense, you can say that Machiavelli loves his country more than his own soul, and he is willing to commit what conventional morality considers a sin if this sin will help his homeland in the long run. According to Machiavelli, a ruler may find himself in a situation where he needs to be cunning like a fox and fierce like a lion, where he needs to be feared rather than loved. 
and where he has to commit acts that are considered immoral or sinful according to traditional religion and conventional morality. But if these things are necessary for the ruler to preserve stability, then he must do what is necessary. Allowing the state to fall into war and chaos just because you personally want to be seen as a nice guy is the biggest sin. That is true immorality. You are allowing thousands of others to suffer just so you could keep your own hands clean. If you refuse to kill one person and that person goes on to cause chaos and suffering for the entire country, this is a far bigger sin than killing that person in the first place. This is Machiavelli's new morality. When it comes to rulers, he is not concerned with morality on the individual level and he is not concerned with making sure that the ruler goes to heaven. He is concerned with the greater good of his homeland. He wants to stop the wars, the factionalism and the suffering and he believes that every virtuous ruler has a duty to do whatever it takes in order to make that dream happen. In stark contrast to both the Christian tradition and the humanist tradition of writers like Cicero, Machiavelli believes that any action is justified in the name of preserving the state and its liberty. And this is precisely the philosophy that I believe Aaron Yeager has adopted in the most recent chapters of the Attack on Titan manga. Although instead of 15th century Italians, Aaron is concerned with this generation of Eldians, who are being forced by both Marley and their own royal family to pay for the sins of their ancestors even though they themselves did nothing wrong. Most people who now claim that Aaron is a villain and evil will point to chapter 1 to 1 and how Aaron encouraged Grisha to steal the founding titan power from Frida even if that meant killing the entire royal family, including the children who were clearly just brainwashed. How could someone who is willing to do that be anything other than a monster, a villain? Just like with Machiavelli, we have to look at the context in which Aaron makes his decision. King Fritz and through him the royal family abandoned their own people on the continent and retreated to the island of Paradis, even though King Fritz knew that the Eldians who were left behind would be brutally oppressed and mistreated by the Marleans. King Fritz then went on to erase the memories of everyone on the island so that they would be completely unaware of their own history and of what was really happening in the outside world. Finally, King Fritz and his successors established a repressive police state where everyone who asked too many questions about the outside world or challenged the ruling elite would be brutally tortured and murdered by the first interior squad. What's more, even when their own people on the island itself were attacked by the Marleyan Titan shifters, the royal family continued to do nothing to help protect their own people. Instead, Karl Fritz continued to force his ideology onto his successors, an ideology that holds that all Eldians deserve to die because their ancestors did bad things centuries ago. This generation of Eldians, who have nothing to do with what happened in the past and who don't even really know what happened, are being mercilessly sacrificed on the altar of King Fritz's bizarre ideology. At this point in the story, Aaron has begun to reject the idea of conventional morality from the perspective of an individual. The idea that he should never under any circumstances kill another human being, and he decides that in order to save hundreds of thousands of Eldian lives, he must sacrifice the lives of the royal family in order to obtain the founding titan power. Aaron doesn't do this because he enjoys killing or because he wants to be evil. He does it because he can no longer stand by and do nothing while thousands of people are suffering. His own mother was killed in front of him. Many of his friends and comrades were also killed and thousands more will continue to die unless a change is made. Unless the founding titan is taken away from the royal family and a new system is established by any means necessary, the suffering will continue. As much as it is wrong to kill even a single person, Aaron believes that not taking the founding titan and allowing thousands of Eldians to keep dying is an even bigger injustice. And I believe that Machiavelli would completely agree with Aaron. It is interesting how in chapter 1 to 1, Aaron emphasizes that ever since he was born, he always wanted freedom. He was always striving for freedom, and he is willing to take away the freedom of anyone who tries to take his own freedom away from him. This is exactly what Machiavelli was also concerned with. Contrary to popular belief, Machiavelli did not advocate for authoritarian or tyrannical rule. As is evident in both The Prince and his longer work, The Discourses, Machiavelli believed that the most stable form of government was a republic, 
and he advised all future rulers to establish republics. It is also important to note that in Machiavelli's time, republics were considered to be the most free form of government. They emphasized strong institutions and checks and balances, which is very different from tyrannical and authoritarian government. But Machiavelli believed that in the ruthless world that he lived in, before a true republic can be created, sacrifices had to be made. So for example, if the person who ultimately unites Italy is an authoritarian leader like, say, Cesare Borgia, that's fine for now, as long as this leader knows that the best strategy for stability in the long run is to establish republican institutions. Interestingly enough, Machiavelli makes multiple references to Lucius Junius Brutus, one of the men responsible for overthrowing the royal family of Rome, the Tarquins, and establishing the Roman Republic around the year 509 BC. After Brutus banished the royal family, the former king made several attempts to overthrow the Republic and get back into power. In fact, during one of those attempts, Brutus' own sons conspired with the royal family against their father. And after they were caught, Brutus allowed both of his sons to be put to death in order to set an example and to preserve the liberty of the newly formed Republic. As Machiavelli puts it, anyone who sets up a tyranny and does not kill Brutus, anyone who introduces self-government and does not kill the sons of Brutus, cannot expect to survive for long. So if you want to be a tyrant, you have to kill those who love liberty or they will eventually kill you. And if you want to preserve liberty, you must kill those who love tyranny and want to take away your freedom before they kill you. Aaron's decision to kill the royal family has many parallels to this principle. Brutus was heartbroken that his sons betrayed him and that they were now going to be put to death for their crimes, but he couldn't intervene because he had to ensure the survival of the Republic. Similarly, I don't think Aaron enjoyed killing the royal family. I don't think he wanted them to die, but he had to do what he believed to be necessary in order to save liberty from tyranny and in order to save this entire generation of Eldians from King Karl Fritz's cruel ideology. To save the lives of potentially hundreds of thousands of innocent Eldians, the lives of a few royal Eldians had to be sacrificed. Now, I am not saying that we should immediately and uncritically accept that Eren did the right thing. In an ideal world, no one would ever have to kill anyone else. And it is definitely not my intention to justify what happened to the royal family, even if we are talking about just a fictional anime world. But my intention is to show that Aaron's actions were driven by a complex and rational philosophy, a philosophy which has its roots in the writings of Niccolo Machiavelli. This is not as simple as Aaron doing something bad, so he is now a bad guy. The world of Attack on Titan has never been simple. It has always made us think. It has always challenged us to look at the world in a way that isn't just black and white, and whether you support Aaron's decision, whether you oppose it, or whether you just honestly don't know what the right decision was, we have to drop this silly idea that Aaron is now a villain. Aaron did what he thought was best for this entire generation of Eldians. He as an individual did something that is considered immoral in order to serve what he believes to be a higher morality. And this higher morality is preserving liberty and saving the Eldian people as a whole. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like it, please leave a like to let me know. And if you happen to be new to Anime Uproar, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Anime Uproar if you want to discuss the philosophy of Aaron Yeager or any such topics, links in the description. And if you want to learn more about Machiavelli and his philosophy, I recommend reading his most popular works, The Prince and The Discourses. In terms of secondary sources, you can check out Quentin Skinner's Machiavelli, A Very Short Introduction, and J.G.A. Pocock's The Machiavellian Moment. Although I will note that I take some issues with their interpretation of Machiavelli's republicanism, and I do not consider these to be perfect or exhaustive sources on the subject. I want to give a big thank you to all of our Anime Uproar patrons for supporting our work and making our videos possible. A special thank you to all of our Pro Hero tier patrons, including the one and only Gilgamesh, Nothing But A Fan, Jason Wilson, King Zeldris, and Angel Cruz. An epic thank you to all of our The One tier patrons, the ones who stand above all other clans, including Baby Ray, Ace, 
Ingrata, Alolan Adam, Matty Mac, Mako Takun, and Keelan. And finally, at the pinnacle of interdimensional greatness, a tier reserved only for legends. A massive thank you to Reagan Harrison and Lord Nuxanor, disciples of Lord Twigo himself. If you enjoy our videos and you think they provide value for you, consider supporting us on Patreon, link in the description. Even a single dollar will give you access to our exclusive patron-only Discord, and your name will appear in our videos along with these amazing people. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboys!